Bikini Hackers is an American torture video designed by the CIA to break the spirit of prisoners in Guantanamo Bay. Made and released in hell, this spawn of Satan managed to rear its head on this mortal plane in 2023 under the banner of Cinema Epoch. For those that don't know what a Cinema Epoch is, I'm with you because I, I'd never heard of them before either. Apparently, they are a film distribution company that specialises in international cinema, whatever that is, when actually they're a wannabe asylum just without making the rip-offs. I can't lie, I can't decide whether this actually is the worst film that I've ever seen in my entire life or not, but I'll let you know at the end of the video. So, what's the plot of this movie? I'm not so sure, so let's find out together, eh? The movie starts as it means to go on. Terribly. The first, and I mean very first scene, is so appallingly put together that I knew it would be a contender for the worst film ever, right here. Just listen to this shite. And before you comment something stupid like, oh Taylor, you stupid hybrid, your sound mixing is as bad as Darby as well, so why don't you shut up, you silly, silly twat. I'm going to need you to lick some raw chicken because whilst my videos aren't I'm not trying to charge you to watch them. Not that I paid for this film, mind, but Mac to film. The flashy opening credits can't distract from the fact that these girls are not in the same place as the blatant stock footage that we've just been shown. People got mad at me in my teacup videos, which you can watch here for my use of stock footage. And it was a lot less egregious than this, so next time somebody complains about it, I will break into their house and make them watch this movie a Clockwork Orange style. So these girls hook up, and fun fact, this film and video are now illegal in Florida. This girl ends up back at the other's place who says, Hi, sorry, I like to get an early morning swim in. Which, you know, I do too, but I wouldn't let a complete stranger run around my house, but that's just me, I suppose. They go back inside and I cannot hear the dialogue for the life of me over the music, and it's kind of like I just did this. See? Now you can barely hear it. It's terrible. Or great, depends on I like to hear dialogue, so this annoyed me greatly. What I will commend this film for, however, is that it wastes no time in making me bored. The efficiency is off the charts, so most people will know to turn away as quickly as possible. It's very impressive. The girl in the bikini hacks a bank in typical movie hacker mode, and then we get more stock footage of numbers and women's in bikinis for the title screen. It was around this sort of time that I thought, you know, I might be in for the worst movie ever made. So more stock footage that looks better than the actual film plays over the brunette girls. Actually, I'm going to look up what she's called. Some more stock footage plays over Sarah's backstory and we get confirmation that Silver Sable over here is in charge of a worldwide hacker group of women in bikinis. Uh, are my nails okay? They look fine. Ow, oh, jump scare. So now we get to meet the rest of the elite international hacker group. Meet the redhead. She won't shut up about her time in Vietnam. Meet Pauline. She's the black one of the group that also speaks in prophecies. Way to fight the stereotypes, movie. The world runs on candy canes and sugar cubes fermented in Dayton, Ohio. What's eating her? Monsters from the end of time. Slowly they consume her soul with small serrated teeth. Meet Erin. She's a slut. Lastly, we have Big Willy, the only one with a Willy. This bunch of misfits are essentially all but one of the characters in the movie. Actually, this movie has no characters, it's just a bunch of people in a film. So, 11 minutes into this six, 67 minute movie. Jesus. So 11 minutes into this 67 minute movie, we have The Crew. Would you like to join us? Join you for what? What are you, we gonna do like a bikini car wash to save the rec center? Um, actually, yeah, we are. That's Sunday, right? Sunday. Uh. This film is made terribly. The Bikini Hackers roll credits. reveal their plans to redistribute all of the money in the world to the people and we are swiftly greeted with the worst scene in film history. Hey, I'm sorry about this. Yeah... It's just that I'm a, okay, I don't want to say nobody, but I just came out here to do film, you know, edit, log footage, 
maybe do reality television. And this whole thing is just so, it, it's, it's really a little much. Yeah, I understand. Well, this has been a weird morning. <laughs> totally. You drop here, right? So what's the plan? So what's the play? When was the last time you wore a bikini? Between a, a montage of the brunette, I've, I've already forgotten her name and cannot be bothered to look it up. Trying on bikinis, uh, we get told via a voiceover in what is clearly not a native language, so I shan't criticise, that the absolutely brilliant plan is to sneak into the headquarters of the place and use the CEO's computer to do the hacking. Once Einstein and Plato over here finish brainstorming, we're met with your standard evil CEO dialed up to 11 in a really boring scene that I can't be bothered to talk about, but we also meet his number two, who we will talk about him later, because if we talk about him now, I'm not going to be able to finish this video. Everyone's in bikinis now, and we get a few scenes essentially explaining how the two main characters really, 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 really want to shag before we get into the planning action. There's a bit of sexy seduction, a guy gets hit over the head with a crowbar, and my will to live goes missing. Do you know where it is? The two main girls stage a breakdown in their bikinis for some reason, and meet up with their friends in a car belonging to this jackass, and they all go to the main lair together under some sort of ruse. Wasn't really paying attention to be honest, kind of skipped over his scene. Oh, by the way as well, in between some scenes there's been this sort of like hacker conversations being displayed on the screen. I don't know why and it has no relevance to any part of the story, so that's another part of this film that can be added to the pile of irrelevancy, along with Wolverhampton Wanderers and Britain first. The girls arrive and the guy comes whilst the villain goes to talk with his number two, who I guess we can talk about now. He serves very little purpose and I think he's a gay furry? Uh, just what a film we're watching. Well, I'm watching. You're just sitting there looking incredibly sexy, I must say. After some sneaky bullshit that would offend the intelligence of literally anybody watching, they <sighs> infiltrate the headquarters and the brunette sneaks around with a special thumb drive. Oh, excuse me, miss. Do you have an appointment? Uh, yes. I'm here to see Cheryl. Oh, okay. I don't know why I bothered. There's always a Cheryl. Piss off. Crab experiments? Skitter, 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 skitter. I'm actually fully convinced the budget for this film consisted of $5, a particularly sloppy blowjob, and a packet of half-eaten Watsons. Unfortunately, the electrical search device gets found, oh no! Then, the CEO goes on some, like, incel tirade about how he hates women and tits. I am the CEO of the ninth biggest company in the world, okay? Boobs, breasts, mammary glands, let me tell you something, Missy. I hate boobs. I hate them. I loathe them. I loathe women that think they can come up to me with boobs. That think they can marry me and take my money with boobs. Is that what you think? Whilst the other guys get back together from their relationship from years ago, I don't know. Oh, there's a bunch of filler and then, oh, whoops, at 4356, there's such a blatant cut. And that was really the straw that broke the camel's back for me. The own goal that sealed it. My joker moment. Why should I make this review? Why should I care? It's all shite. Everything's shite. It's terrible. Fuck off. Watch my videos. Watch all my videos. I'm sorry for telling you to fuck off. I'm just so mad that I've sat here and decided to make a fucking video about bikini hackers. Uh, I don't know. Important stuff this time of night. Well, you know, just the fate of the world. I don't know. Okay, do you want to know? We're here to hack the main computer somehow. There's like a program or something. And then we're just going to distribute money all over the world. What are you telling us to? Sorry? Well, if you're not gonna bring a world to tell the anarchy, I am. Don't you remember the good times?
I don't understand how a 67 minute film can have so much filler. This, the hacker chat rooms, cut it. You aren't getting nominated for an Oscar. Please, end the suffering sooner. You don't have to get over an hour. One poor stripper scene later and... <laughs> Thankfully, this is a very short movie, even if it should be a lot shorter. Gary Lineker and her partner shag on the desk, which is not the insertion they were there to perform, but whatever. And the CEO catches them. Meanwhile, Big Dick Willie is running around. Surely, that's a crime. Peter, or whatever her name is, comes in and karate chops the CEO. Then, and I'm not joking, evaporates into thin air. I see we are now, and only now, getting deliberately silly. They open windows and that redistributes all of the money in the world, apparently. Uh, angry dude finds the girls, gets dumped in a pool with bikinis, which he hates of course, and thankfully, joyously, mercifully, it's over. Hey, at least they changed bikinis this time. Maybe it was shot over two days instead of one. Overall, this is a terrible film, with sets looking like someone's living room, atrocious acting and horrendous colour grading. Only stock footage is something that I would want to see again from this. It all felt so lazy, like Scott Hillman wanted to make a movie but didn't want to do anything proper, so he made this piece of trash and then decided to try and make it a satire after he had finished on the afternoon that he shot it. I don't say that to be mean either, but some of the technical errors in this film are so simple, basic and easy to fix that I genuinely cannot think of another logical explanation. It's absurd. As for whether this is the worst film I've ever seen, it probably is. For those that don't know, last year I made a list of every 2022 release that I saw during the year and right at the bottom was Thor God of Thunder, a film released by the Asylum to quote, compete with Thor Love and Thunder, which also wasn't very good to be fair. That film had absolutely no reason to exist and was the most cynical attempt at a cash grab that is possible within the movie industry. And yet I still found more enjoyment out of that film. However, in terms of movies that have simultaneously made me unintentionally disgusted, as well as bored and annoyed, nothing is yet to top the next film that I'll fully review. 